All right, hello everyone. In this video series, we'll explore how to perform basic time series forecasting using both Excel and the Orange Data Mining Software tool. We'll go through the steps of obtaining some real world data online, doing some basic exploration of the data, building simple moving average and exponential smoothing models that we can then use to make a single period forecast. And we'll also introduce and discuss some common accuracy measures that we can use to compare our models and ultimately help us to choose the one that we'd like to implement. The first step will be to go online and obtain some data. And for this series, I'm going to work with some housing price data, but really any data that's fit for time series evaluation will do. So let's begin. So you want to open your web browser and we can obtain some data from the Canadian Real Estate Association. So we could go directly to the CREA website by just typing that in the address bar. But I want to show you how you can navigate there uh, via web search. So I'm just going to do a, a web search here for CREA through Google. Hopefully it comes up with the Canadian Real Estate Association for you. Um, and then typically you'll see a number of kind of sub links within the site that appear as well. The one that we're interested in is the CREA stats page, but I'll show you how to get there directly from the homepage of the CREA. So once you're in here, uh, there's a lot of information about Canadian real estate if you're interested. Um, but the purpose of this uh, series of videos is not to explore, you know, the Canadian real estate market in general. It's just to do some short term <clears throat> time series forecasting. So up in the top menu, you'll see there's an option for CREA stats. I'm just going to click on that. And that should bring you to the latest kind of national statistics page. And, and this is op updated, uh, I want to say almost monthly. So depending on when you're accessing this video, um, you might get different results. But currently we're in January of 2021. And you can see we've got the summary results here um, posted as of December 15th of 2020. So we would expect to see data um, from way back in history all the way through hopefully November of uh, last year. Now there's a lot of information here about, again, Canadian home sales and statistics, and you're free to have a look at it if you're interested, but, and there is some good inf interesting information in here, but what we're really interested in is near the bottom where we can download this data uh, in an Excel format. The interesting thing here to note is um, just when we scroll down a, a few scrolls, we've got a chart here that indicates the 10 year monthly moving average, which is interesting because we're going to try to do a, an average uh, moving average um, forecast as well. But anyways, I don't want to dwell too long on the information here. Again, lots of good, interesting stuff. If that is, you know, your thing, housing markets, but we're going to skip all the way down to the bottom where there's a link here that we can get this house price index data available in an Excel format. So you'll want to go ahead and download <clears throat> from here. You might get presented with a terms of use license agreement, like we can see here. And if that's the case, Again, just scroll down, accept, we, we want the data, so we're, we're just gonna accept it. And then go ahead and you can uh, save that file to your machine. It's gonna save it as a zip uh, archive, so you'll have to unzip that on your machine. And once you do, you should find that there are two uh, files available um, in there. So with that done, I'm just gonna minimize this, and I've already downloaded this in advance and I've got the files extracted to my desktop. So I'm going to open this up and hopefully you'll see these two files inside the zip archive. One of them is seasonally adjusted data and the other one is not seasonally adjusted. And you can get more information about what is seasonally adjusted versus not seasonally adjusted on that website. But the, the short gist of it is housing markets typically go through um, cycles throughout the year and seasons where, you know, sales are typically um, higher in some parts of the year and lower in other parts. And to adjust for that variance in the home sales, um, a number of techniques are used to produce a seasonally adjusted spreadsheet. So to save ourselves the trouble of having to mitigate and deal with the seasonal adjustment ourselves, we could just go ahead and, and directly work with the seasonally adjusted uh, spreadsheet. So I'm just gonna open this up with Excel And hopefully you see something like the following. So there's a lot of data in here, but we're not going to be really interested in, in most of this. First of all, if you look along the bottom, you can see this is 
the current aggregate worksheet. So this has just got the aggregate data for Canada um, in general. And then if you look across, you'll notice there are separate worksheets for a number of different areas uh, across the country. So if we use the uh, right navigation button here to go through our worksheets, you should eventually come across a couple of tabs for Alberta. And so I'm, I'm currently in Edmonton and uh, I'm sure you know, some of my students are also located in Edmonton here. So that's what I'm going to go with. But again, feel free to choose another city if you like. The, the particular city in question doesn't really matter a whole bunch for the purposes of the exercise. Um, but I'm going to choose one just so we can specifically look at the details a little bit. So if you navigate to the Edmonton worksheet and highlight it, uh, we can zoom in a little bit here and see what kind of data we're looking at. I'm just going to expand these headings so that we can read them. So we've got dates running down in the first column. January 2005 is our first date, and that's taken as our base for the pricing index. So you'll notice that the value here across for the HPIs is 100. And then from there, the, the composite index is used to compare the average uh, benchmark prices, and you'll get a figure that's relative to that 100. So typically, you would see this value increase because home prices are going up. But in some cases, like you can see May 2005, they were actually lower than they were in, in January. Now, there are a lot of records in here. So we've you know, essentially got 15 years uh, of data. If we scroll down to the very bottom, we can see the latest record here is for November of 2020. So all that's interesting. Um, and, and we can look at all this data, but we don't need all of the, the different um, HPI or housing price values across all segments. So just to be explicit for what we're going to do in this example, I'm just going to work with the single family benchmark um, sale value. So again, there's apartments and two stories and townhouses, but I'm just going to go with the single family for no particular reason, just because it's one of many. But if you wanted to go through and look particularly at apartments or townhomes, you could, you could choose that data too. So we could, we could work directly in this spreadsheet the way that it is, but I'd like to isolate the data um, for our own purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new workbook. And I'm just going to take the data from this worksheet and copy and paste it into my new workbook so that we've isolated the data. And then we can move on with some data exploration. So I want the date column. So I'm just going to copy this. Oops. And I'm going to paste that in my new workbook here. And I also want to take the, for Edmonton, the single family benchmark. And I'm going to paste that in here. And so now I've isolated the data. So I'm going to rename my worksheet to Edmonton, November 2020. And I'm just going to go SF for single family. And that's it. So now we've obtained our data that we could use to perform our time series evaluation. In the next video, we'll explore the data to see if we can understand it a little bit better before we go ahead and start making our forecasts.